walking the timber trail, which is 85 kilometers through the Pudiora forest. In the last episode, we walked 23 kilometers from Boggan Hut to the Pedo Pedo camp, where we are now. Good morning, welcome to day three. Just woken up and it's foggy. The tent was nice and warm in there. Some like a Linda, just made a coffee. Mike's just taking our tent down this morning and we'll be off. Bit of a slower start, it's almost nine. And it's a bit of a late start this morning, <laughs> nine o'clock we got away. I thought we only had 18 kilometers today, but apparently it's 23. It looks like it's gonna be a hot one. But right now it's perfect temperature, nice and cool. We're gonna try and put a bit of pace on until it gets hot and then we'll probably take lots of rests. We've got a road walking again the next morning, but still beautiful, look where we are. So for two kilometers from the campsite, we've just got off the main road, back into the bush again. It's so beautiful, it's a great walk. So if you have cycled it, maybe you could consider walking it. A different perspective. So this bridge is the longest and highest on the timber trail at 141 meters long and 53 meters high at the midpoint above the Mara Mataha River. Wow. And I was wondering how they built it and I just look, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have trouble walking across it, let alone hanging over the side there. <laughs> Longest and highest swing bridge on the timber trail. It's like spectacular looking down there. So it's quite interesting how they actually make these bridges. First off, they have to find a site that's near enough the same level on both sides, which is flat and got some rock formation on it. Then they've got to find a hole, dig a hole for the foundation of the pillars either end. Then they've got to work out the length of steel cord that they need to go from one side to the other. They anchor it at one end and they helicopter lift it over the post behind me to the other side. In one day, they did it. Then having done that, then they had to string the hangers down and then put on the platform. Then after that, the ropes that go off to the side or the wires that go off to the side are the wind supports to stop it swaying too much in the wind. That's how it's all built. Bridge after the longest swing bridge is a nice little bit of uphill. We're both thinking, oh, we're glad we're not on bikes. I think this would be a killer. Downhill will be fun. What are you doing there, Joe? Oh, no, just something's rubbing here, so I'm just going to put a bit of Minty's wool. This is wool I got when Minty was shorn. Yeah, sheep's wool is really good for stopping chafing and rubbing and stuff. So and see. who's Minty? Oh, Minty was our um, pet lamb that we reared because he was an orphan. That was a couple of years ago. I've got a whole video series of them. Go and have a look. Do you think we can catch the next train out of here? No, uh, it looks like the train's gone without us, Mike. We're at the end of the line. So the Ongaru tramway used to come here and it's left a couple of wheels by the looks of it. Nice little stop, little bench there to stop at, which is quite a nice drink. Fixed up my shoe and we're off again. My pack weighed in before I left without any water in at eight kilos. So with all my food and stuff in it. And I've lost eight kilos since I gave up drinking over a year ago. So essentially I'm carrying nothing, just water. That probably weighs less than eight kilos now because I've eaten some of the food. These trees here have got these hanging down bits and greeny sort of like leaves. When they grow up, they will shed the lower branches and they come like knobbly trees at the top, like those over there. Now it's thought that they actually adapted this lower level so that they were unattractive to mower, which are now extinct. So they weren't very tasty for a mower to eat, so they could actually grow into full-size trees. So what was a mower exactly? A mower was a, a flightless bird of New Zealand. A bit like an ostrich, wasn't it? Yeah, sort or of. Or emu. Yeah, a bit smaller than an ostrich and emu, I think. It is lovely and green through here. And there's a cut through the hill here to put the rail in. And it's made a nice little track for us to walk along. So we're at the free point turn. This is where they would turn the steam engine round. So you have to come down a hill here, one track facing that way, here reverse, 
up that way and then come steaming up this way. He's turned around ready to go back up the hill again. And so this is Mystery Creek and the name of Mystery Creek is still a mystery. There's a picture of the steam engine there. And you can see the farm in there. Oh, yeah. Just building up the steam so he can go up the hill. Do that again, Mike. Go <laughs> up the hill. And Mike keeps seeing things. What is it? Steel cable? Yeah, so. I think it was part of the original railway. I don't know, unless they had a, a cable drawn train up here because it's too steep. All these things Mike notices, but no one else probably will. This is what you miss if you're on a bike. Yeah, they're probably hazards when you're on a bike. So Mike's been spouting off all these interesting facts about the steam trains, which I'm finding quite interesting. Maybe you should tell the people, Mike. I don't know what I've got to tell you. Man, you were saying about the fireman. But well, the fireman had a very important job. He had to make sure there's enough steam to get up the hill. So even if he's going along the flat, he had to work out where the next hill was going to be and where he'd have to start building the fire up to make the steam to make sure he could get up that hill. And then going up the hill, he had to make sure he didn't have too much so that he wasted steam when he got to the top. Otherwise, the cold might not last him the whole trip. And I said, well, wouldn't, if he's done it a few times, he'd know exactly how much he needed and what time he needed it and what stage, and then it'd just be like the same every day. And Mike said... Well, it depends on how the fire's burning. You know, the fire might not burning, be burning as hot. The coal might not be such a good grade as the coal he had yesterday. It might be damp because it's been raining. It's all this he had to take into account when trying to build his fire. So that's it, Mike's little history lesson on the steam engines. He used to be a train spotter, that's why I know so much. He used to follow the steam trains around and pick their numbers. He might not want people to know that. Well, all the way along the timber trail, they have these little places where you can have a little shelter if it's raining or if it's hot. Um, table. This is the Mystery Creek spot. There's a table and chairs to have your lunch. I mean, it's an absolute luxury. Uh, a drop toilet over there and water collection down there. I'm just taking a walk down to try and find some water. This is a water collection point down here. This didn't win. <laughs> just want my chance. It's not exactly running. <laughs> I'll get some just in case. So I just collected some pretty yucky looking water, but if we're desperate, we'll drink it. We'll put some aqua tabs in it. Yes. Same. Good job I had tiling experience to spread this to help. <laughs> Peanut butter wrap. Had some yesterday and it did go like glue in my mouth. I like, I prefer mine on these I little rice cakes. Just to prove there was a railway going through here, bit of old train track there. And a little warning sign saying to stop ahead. I don't know what that's all about. Do you think that's the end of the track, Mike? We've got to turn around and go back. That would be a bummer, wouldn't it? Oh, it's only 57 kilometers back to the start where we started from. It's not a warning for walkers, it's a warning for cyclists to slow down because there's a big gate. So we just go through here. It's pretty tight though. You'd have to lift your bike over there if you had panniers on. There's a track now. With an iron nail, I would have been hammered through the rail into the sleeper to hold the rail down. And how old do you reckon that nail is, Mike? That's got to be, well, I don't know how old the railway was. It's 1930s. That's got to be like 90 years old. It's a pretty old nail. I'm not carrying that because just feel the weight of that. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. Okay, it's not that heavy, but it is quite heavy. Stop for a little break and, you know, you notice when you stop how quiet it is. It's, otherwise, it's a constant crunch, crunch, crunch of your shoes on the gravel, but now it's like... This is a swap meet place where the locomotives or the, the trains used to stop and swap their loads and have a little chat. And... This little engine would bring up little loads up to here and it would be loaded onto big engine who would take them back down to the sawmill. And it was loaded in such a way that the heaviest and biggest logs were right next to the engine and then by two logs as it went down. And they were loaded onto bogies. Oh, a bogey. No, not, not but a bogey, it's two wheels. Oh, okay. Here so there'd be two the wheels here. at one end of the log, two wheels at the other end. And they would have little swivel plates on them so that when they went around the corners, the logs wouldn't fall off. Another bridge, Joe. Oh, -hoo! 
We like bridges. Where the Waioni Bridge. Oh, I hear rushing water. Oh, nice. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Hey? Wow, look at that. So Mike's just gotten a bit excited because there's some old railway sleepers here. If you look here. Yeah. There. Oh, there's one of the nails has come out. And that's there. It's where the nails went in. Oh, those nails we showed you earlier. Some remnants from the olden days. Major day, hasn't it, Mike? It has. As well as train tracks, we just spotted an old oven. How cool is this? Number 11 camp, which is just, it's just 20 kilometers from where we camped last night. It's got this little shelter here, little table and table here, and a little camping spot here. This is just amazing. And look at this outlook, it's beautiful. No water though, there is a water tap there, but there's actually, it's empty. So don't rely on water. There's no toilets either. <laughs> so you can probably sleep in here if you wanted to, a bit of shelter if you had to. Yeah, little hut. Actually walking to number 10 camp, 5.7 k's, another two hours. So it'll be 26 kilometers for today, that's crazy. So here's a jigger turntable. I think Mike's gonna tell us what that is. Well, jiggers are often modified cars, utes or motorbikes. And it's always best to be able to see which way you're going, looking forward. So you could drive up here, turn it around and drive back down again. They'd be used for towing logs up the hill. So they had the bush crew live in the camps and the locomotives, because they're coming in daily, would sometimes take them in if they wanted. They could catch a lift in to go see the movies or something like that. So here on a, on a Wednesday used to be movie night. Cool. Yeah, well, they take them in, see the movie, and they also bring them back again at, later on at night. And the payroll goes AWOL. A guy, Dave McCracken, used to ride in on his pony with paychecks and cash for all the workers here, like a hundred men. One day the horse slipped on mud, Dave fell off and the horse ran away. Oh no. With all the wages. Oh, oh no. no. Took two weeks to find it. <laughs> That's interesting. No stopping for the next 300 metres because of all this stuff falling down. Mind you, it's only for cyclists. Pedestrians, didn't say anything about pedestrians not stopping, did it Mike? No. Nobody cares about us. Interesting footprints. Figure out what it is, maybe a little goat or something around here. We'll keep an eye out, we need to see a little goat. So crazy, crazy. Do these rocks crack like this? Well, it's got a weakness and then they get water in there. And when it gets colder, it freezes, the water expands, cracks the stone open. So we're just past the 60 kilometer mark and it looks like there's another little water source here. I don't know whether it's a, a good water source or not. Running water looks clear, and if you've got aqua tabs, chuck them in to treat it or boil it. Oh, Mike's got a little friend. Oh, yuck. Yuck. Praying mantis. Come on. Uh, up get you rid go. of it. Yuck. They'll bite. They bite. They're going to bite you. Oh, Mike doesn't know how to get rid of it. Don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. There we go. And then just past the 61 kilometer mark, there's a nice little water source, nice running water. What you catch in? I don't know. A bottle of water? <laughs> well this morning's I had some wiggly things in it. It's always the last few kilometres, it's always the hardest. But at least it's a beautiful walk through here this afternoon. Um, we've been walking almost nine hours today. We left at nine this morning, it's almost six in the evening. And I think we've got another 20 minutes or so to go. Oh, Mike looks like he's limping a little bit. Hey. It's been a long day, 26 kilometers I think so far. What a view. Look at that. 
after being in the trees all day. Rewarded with this amazing view. Anyway, I'm gonna keep going before I seize up because I think once I, I'd love to sit there and have a rest, but once I stop, I don't think I'll get moving again. Right, so there's a steam engine here, which is used to roll the logs onto the bogies. Not as it's shown here. That's just for hauling the log, but oh, yeah. it would have rolled it. Oh, yeah. So they had inside there, the bogies here, that with a cord wrapped around it, put it across. So here we are, number 10 camp. Jenny and Linda already set up. And we're just gonna set up in a minute. Oh, it's a wobbly, wobbly bridge. <laughs> 